Hello Widget Watchers, welcome back to another video. In this video we are going to build this Brick Breaker game using the Flame Game Engine. And we are going to build this game in Flutter, so that you can run this game on your mobile device. So, let's get started. And this is going to be series of two video, where in the first video we will build this game, and in the second video we will beautify this game, and the we will add the current score and game over functionality, and restart game thing in this application. So for developing game in Flutter using Flame first we need to add Flame dependency in our pubspec.yaml file. So come to the pubspec.yaml file, and here add the Flutter animate to add the animated effect in our game, then add the Flame package. Now create the a directory named src, and inside this directory create a file named config.dart, so in this config file we will specify the configuration of our game. So in this file first specify the game width and game height, here I'm specifying the static height and width of the game. You need to use media query to get the height and width of the screen. Now afterwards create a one more directory inside this src folder as components, and in this directory we will store the individual components of our game, so the first component of our brick breaker game is the play area, so create a file named playarea.dart, and in this file we will create the play area component of our game. Now in this class create a class named as play area which will extends rectangle component, and with as game reference of brick breaker, and don't worry about this brick breaker class. We will create this class in few minutes, and one more thing inside this config class make these height and width thing as double, then inside this play area class and here we will create the play area component of our game, so in this class first create a constructor of this class, and inside this constructor first call the super constructor, and inside this super constructor specify the paint property, and inside this paint property specify the color of the play area, them come out of this constructor and here override the on load method of this class. And here first change this return type to void instead of function, then add the async method here, and inside this on load method now call the super method, and then specify the size of this play area, and the size of this play area will be the width and height of the game, so specify the size as vector2 of game.width and game.height, then also import this future or and that's it for this play area class. Now inside this src directory create a one more dart file as brick breaker, and in this file we will create the main class of our game, so this brick breaker class will be responsible for creating the game, and adding the components to the game, and handling the game events, so now here first create the brick breaker class, and this class will extends the flame game class, now inside this class first add the empty constructor, then add super constructor, and inside this super constructor, specify the camera property, and inside this camera property specify the camera component with fixed resolution, and inside this fixed resolution specify the width and height of the game, so this height and width will be the same as we specified in the config file, and this camera component will be responsible for rendering the game on the screen, then add the width and height getter method, and inside this method return the size.x and size.y, then override the onload method of this class, and here change the return type to void, and add the async keyword here, and import the future or, then call the super method, and inside this super method first specify the anchor of the camera viewfinder as top left, so this anchor is responsible for specifying the position of the camera on the screen, then add the play area component to the world, and to add the play area component to the world, so here world means the game world, and this play area component will be the background of our game. Now go to the main.dart file, and here inside this main function first create the instance of the brick breaker class, and then create the game widget. And inside this game widget specify the game property, now go to the play area class and here import the brick breaker class, now all the errors has been resolved in the current code, and the play area has been added to our game world, so now run the application, and yay, we have our play area on the screen, but for me the width of the play area is bit small, so let me increase it to 340, and now it's looking fine. So we have added the play area, now in our brick breaker game, we need to add the ball for hitting the bricks, so let's create and add that. So for that inside this config file first specify the ball radius, so here I want that my ball should be of 0.02% of current width, so I have specified that. 
Now inside the component directory create a one more dart file as ball.dart, then come inside this file, and here create ball class which will extends the circle component, and this circle component will be responsible for creating the ball in our game, and this ball will be used for hitting the bricks, so inside this ball class first create the constructor of this class. And inside this constructor first specify the velocity of the ball, then specify the position of the ball, then specify the radius of the ball, and then add the super constructor. And inside this super constructor specify the radius of the ball, then specify the anchor of the ball as center, then specify the paint property, and inside this paint property specify the color of the ball, then add the style property, and inside this style property specify the painting style as fill, then add the velocity property, and then here override the update method of this class. And inside this update method first call the super method, then update the position of the ball by adding the velocity to the position, then go to the brick breaker class. And here add the rand variable of type math.random, then import the math package, then come inside this on load method, and here in the world add the ball component, and this ball component needs three values, the velocity, the position, and the radius, so for the velocity specify the vector 2 of rand.next double minus 0.5 into width, and height, then normalize this vector. Then scale this vector by height by 5, then for the position specify the size by 2, and for the radius. Specify the ball radius, then here add debug mode to true, and now save the code. And run the application, and yay, we have our ball on the screen, and it's moving, let's see this one more time, so run the application once more, and the ball is moving perfectly as it should suppose to move, so we have added the ball to our game, now in our brick breaker game, we need to add the collision detection, so the collision detection adds a behavior where your game recognizes when two objects came into contact with each other. So to add collision detection to the game, add the has collision detection mix in to the brick breaker, now come to the play area class, and here inside the super constructor add the children parameter, and inside this children parameter add the rectangle hitbox, and this rectangle hitbox will be responsible for detecting the collision of the ball with the play area, then go to the ball class. And here add the with collision callbacks mix in, and this mix in will be responsible for detecting the collision of the ball with the play area, then add has game reference mix in to the ball class. And this mix in will be responsible for adding the game reference to the ball class, then inside super add the children property, and inside this children property add the circle hitbox, and this circle hitbox will be responsible for detecting the collision of the ball with the bricks, then override the on collision start method, and inside this method first call the super method, then check if the other is the play area, then check if the intersection point is less than or equal to zero, then change the velocity of the ball in y direction, then check if the intersection point is less than or equal to zero, then change the velocity of the ball in x direction, then check if the intersection point is greater than or equal to the width of the game, then change the velocity of the ball in x direction, then check if the intersection point is greater than or equal to the height of the game, then add the remove effect to the ball. And then outside of this if statement add the debug print and here print something. Now go to the config file and here add the bat width and its value is going to be 2% of game width, then add the bat height and its value is going to be double of ball radius, then add the bat step and its value is going to be 5% of game width, then inside the component directory create a one more dart file as bat, so this is going to bat for our brick breaker game, so come inside this file, and here create a bat class which will extends the position component, and this position component will be responsible for creating the bat in our game, and this bat will be used for hitting the ball, and then this class will extends drag callbacks, and has game reference of brick breaker, then inside this bat class first create the constructor of this class, and inside this constructor first add the corner radius property, then add the position property, then add the size property, then add the super constructor, and inside this super constructor specify the anchor property as center, then add the children property, and inside this children property add the rectangle hitbox, then create the corner radius variable for this class. Then add the paint thing, and inside this paint specify the color of the bat, then add the style property, and inside this style property specify the painting style as fill, then here override the render method, 
and inside this render method first call the super method, then first on the canvas draw the rounded rectangle, then override the on drag update method, and inside this method first call the super method, then update the position of the bat by adding the current position of bat width. Events local delta value in x direction, then add the clamp method, so that the bat should not go outside the screen, then add the move by method, and inside this method first add the move to effect, and inside this move to effect specify the new position of the bat, then add the effect controller, and inside this effect controller specify the duration of the effect, then go to the brick breaker class, and here first add the keyboard events mix in. Then inside on load method add the bat component to the world, and this bat component needs three values, the corner radius, the position, and the size. So for the corner radius specify the radius dot circular of ball radius by 2, then for the position specify the vector 2 of width by 2, and height by 0.95, then for the size specify the vector 2 of bat width, and bat height, then override the on key event method, then import the all the required packages, now inside this on key event method first call the super method, then here add switch case, and inside this switch case first check. If the event is key arrow left, then in the world query the bat component, then call the first move by method, and inside this method, specify the bat step in negative direction. Then check if the event is key arrow right, then move the bat in positive direction, then return the key event result dot handled. Then go to the ball class and here inside the on collision start method, and inside this method, first remove the remove from parent and here add the remove effect, and inside this remove effect, specify the delay of 0.35. Then check if the other is the bat, then assign the velocity of the ball in y direction, then assign the velocity of the ball in x direction by adding the position of the ball in x direction minus the position of the bat in x direction by the size of the bat in x direction multiply by the width of the game by 0.3. Now save the code and run the app, and yay, we have our bat on the screen, and it's moving, and the ball is also moving. And when the ball is hitting the bat, it's moving in the opposite direction. Now come into the config.dart file, and here add the list of colors, so these colors are going to be the colors of the bricks. Now we need to add the space between for the bricks, so add the brick gutter, and its value is going to be 1% of game width. Then add the brick width, so here I want that in one row there should be 10 bricks, so here we need to add the space in that way. So here, first write game width, then we will minus the value of brick gutter multiplied by the color list's length plus 1, then divide this value by the length of list, so by performing this action we will get the width of the brick. Then add the brick height, and its value is going to be 3% of game height. Then afterwards, here add the difficulty modifier, and its value is going to be 1.03, so this difficulty modifier will be used for increasing the speed of the ball. Then inside the component directory, create one more dart file as brick.dart. Then inside this file, create brick class which will extends the rectangle component, and this rectangle component will be responsible for creating the bricks in our game, and this class will also extends the collision callbacks. So this collision callbacks will be responsible for detecting the collision of the ball with the bricks. Then add the has game reference mix in to the brick class, and this mix in will be responsible for adding the game reference to the brick class. Then inside this brick class, first create the constructor of this class, and inside this constructor, first add the position property, then add the color property, then add the super constructor, and inside this super constructor specify the size property, then specify the anchor property as center, then specify the paint property, and inside this paint property, specify the color of the brick. Then add the style property, and inside this style property specify the painting style as fill, then add the children property, and inside this children property add the rectangle hitbox, then override the on collision start method, and inside this method first call the super method, then remove the brick from the parent when the ball hits the brick. Then here add the check if the game world children query of brick length is equal to 1, then remove all the balls and bats from the world. So here, if all the bricks are removed from the game, then user won the game, and in that case, we need to remove bat and ball. 
Then go to the ball class and here inside the constructor add the difficulty modifier parameter, then add the double variable as difficulty parameter. Now inside the on collision start methods if statement, and inside this if statement, first check if the other is the brick, then check if the position of the ball in y direction is less than the position of the brick in y direction minus the size of the brick in y direction by 2, then change the velocity of the ball in y direction. Then check if the position of the ball in y direction is greater than the position of the brick in y direction plus the size of the brick in y direction by 2. Then change the velocity of the ball in y direction. Then check if the position of the ball in x direction is less than the position of the brick in x direction, then change the velocity of the ball in x direction. Then check if the position of the ball in x direction is greater than the position of the brick in x direction, then change the velocity of the ball in x direction. Then outside of these if conditions, multiply the velocity of the ball by difficulty modifier. Then go to the brick breaker class, and here inside the on load method, and here inside the ball, add the difficulty modifier, and specify the difficulty modifier as difficulty modifier. Then afterwards, we need to add the bricks in the world, so for that, here first add the await then write world dot add all. Now here I want to add 10 bricks in one row and 5 rows of bricks, so for that, first here add the for loop and inside this for loop will run 10 times because brick color's length is 10. So this was for one row. Then add one more for loop, and inside this for loop will run 5 times. Now inside this loop, call the brick class, and inside this class, first specify the position of the brick, so for specifying the position, here first add the vector 2, then for the x position, specify the i plus 0.5 into brick width plus i plus 1 into brick gutter. Then for the y position, specify the j plus 2.0 into brick height plus j into brick gutter. Then specify the color of the brick, and for the color, specify the brick colors of i. Now I guess everything is correct, now save the code and run the app, and yay, we have our bricks on the screen, and the ball is hitting the bricks, and the bricks are getting removed. So this was it for this video, now in the next video we will remove these elements position text from this screen, then we will add the functionality of restart game and game over thing in this game. So if you like this video, then please hit the like button, and if you haven't subscribed to Widget Wisdom, then please do subscribe to us.